Hi, this is Troy Downing, the Montana State Auditor. I'm sitting here with my Deputy Insurance Commissioner, Bob Biskupiak. We're going to be talking a little bit about fire risk and finding insurance in high-risk areas and whether those markets are available and the research we've done to find out what is available. So, Bob, thanks for sitting with me. When I first came into office, and actually before that when I was running, I started getting calls from insurance agents and they were concerned that they had clients, you know, specifically in, in high risk areas, in, in protection class nine, 10 areas of, of expensive homes where insurance was being non-renewed and they were having difficulty finding replacement insurance. And so as we started collecting some of these, it made us, you know, start discussing this internally. And Bob and, my, Bob and I have had many discussions on this, on, you know, answering a couple of questions. It, first of all, are these markets available? Is there product available for these consumers? And if not, what our solutions uh, could be? And so one of the things that we started talking about was looking at a fair plan. And so this was basically an alternative market for uh, finding minimum insurance policies when one wasn't available in the market. And so, Bob, if you want to just really briefly just talk about you know a fair plan and, and how you see those. Certainly. A fair plan, it actually stands for fair access to insurance products. It's again, as uh, Troy mentioned, it is a residual market. The first thing that we did is we uh, contacted the Oregon Fair Plan. They've been in existence for, existence for decades. And uh, we wanted to find out how theirs worked, you know, what worked well, what they needed to improve upon. So that was the first thing to set up the framework of the, of the fair plan. Right. Well, thank you. And so one of the things that concerned me is before we start trying to solve problems or coming up with solutions for a problem, we wanted to make sure that there was a problem. So both Bob and I have had multiple discussions with industry uh, in, in Montana to find out really what was happening. And we decided to set up a, a task force to explore whether there really was product out there and what the need was. So Bob, if you could talk a little bit about how that started. You bet. The task force is, is very diverse. We wanted to have representatives and discussions with all interested parties. So we talked to insurance agents, agencies. We also talked to company representatives, company underwriters. Uh, we included discussions with national trade associations and state trade associations and um, also the surplus lines producers because they're very much an integral part of uh, tough placement of coverage. Right. Well, thank you for that. Um, you know, and just to reiterate something, you know, we really wanted to collect data and understand what was available and what was not because it was not something that we wanted to do in creating a program that was not necessary. So if we could avoid that, or even better yet, have industry solve this problem for us, if it did exist, that was better. So we went down our fact, uh, our fact finding uh, mission. So, you know, Bob, once more, how, how did you make up, how did you make the selections for uh, participants in this uh, working group, in this task force when you put it together? I wanted to include everyone that would have a touch with the customer. Again, from uh, the application process to the policy delivery process. And, and again, that's the reason we wanted to include everybody uh, along that uh, work stream on that. And what did you find when working with these folks were the, the big drivers in availability of product um, was it, uh, you know, wildfire risk scores? What, what, what were the driving factors in, in making uh, it less available, if, if that was the case, when I believe that was, um, or giving the perception that there wasn't product available? There are several issues that we had to tackle as far as the interviews that we conducted. Uh, one is the wildfire risk. You know, that's uh, um, the uh, risk assessment on individual properties, and um, that's a trend that's going out through the United States right now, driven by some large wildfires in California and Oregon, and that's touching Montana now. So that uh, created some element of uh, availability. Um, the other part of it is high-valued homes. You know, we've had, um, Montana continues to grow, and um, folks like to build their houses out in the woods, uh, and they like to have lots of trees around, and that's resulted in some real high fire line scores on that, and uh, and that reduced the you know the amount of companies that were interested in providing that coverage. And if they could find the coverage, it was an affordability issue on that. The complaints that we originally got were from you know agencies primarily that said they couldn't find coverage, 
and um, you know through our work we determined that you know coverage could almost always be found it was more of an affordability issue um, and there were some other nuances uh, to the uh, application process and the marketing process as well right well thank you uh, one thing I just want to repeat on that because I think it's important is the statement that you just made that coverage could be found it was just a question of cost because one of the things that we run into especially as I started off with with these you know high risk you know homes that are in areas where there aren't services nearby where there's you know high fire risk uh, low availability of you know services to, to, to deal with uh, protecting a structure if there is a fire and then you know also of expensive homes which we're seeing a lot a lot more of in, in Montana and uh, you know the question seems to be not a question of availability but a question of price and one other thing I just want to you know repeat that you just said that I think is also important is that uh, it may be that an agent doesn't have knowledge or access to a product it doesn't mean that the product doesn't exist right let me you know explain that a little bit further and that you know the complaints that we were getting or concerns that were being raised typically were from smaller agencies uh, that didn't have a lot of company appointments or they might have been captive insurance agencies and captives are they're the ones where they only work with one company so um, their opportunity to find coverage is, is is much less on that one of the things that we found is you know a particular agency might not be able to place coverage but their neighbor agency down the street could and that was something that came out of our, our study and our task force right well that, that's important so what are you seeing out there in terms of insurers and how how are the markets changing particularly for these you know uh, more expensive homes in high-risk areas what, what are you seeing change in the market well it is tightening up you know in the insurance world we call this a hard market um, companies are uh, rebounding from some poor uh, profitable uh, unprofitable years and um, now we're seeing companies take some rate and they're being more selective on what kind of risk they're going to take on as well. One of the things that companies do, they, they hire third-party vendors that do uh, analytics and different models on how much risk they have in an area. So that also comes into play uh, and overall exposure. Right. Are you aware now of any uninsurable risk in Montana? Are, are you aware of any of that out there? The The... There are probably some uninsurable risks, but probably due to the conditions of the property itself. It's not the wildfire score, it's not the high value. It's, it's truly that the, the property has not been maintained, and, uh, and that is problematic. Um, but it's not, it's not a crisis. Usually you can take that to the surplus lines marketplace. And, and again, the surplus lines, it's not admitted companies um, where uh, they're used to dealing with hard to place risk. So the surplus lines marketplace has really stepped up and grown significantly in Montana over the last couple of years. Right, thanks. And what are you seeing in terms of insurers doing any kind of reinsurance pools for you know, uh, insuring these you know, high risk uh, uh, issues I've engaged uh, several wholesalers and again these are the intermediaries that uh, work with surplus lines uh, brokers and the companies and um, there is some discussion about developing uh, a reinsurance pool you see that down in Florida and the Carolinas with wind pools again the um, individual companies don't want to take on all that risk but with the reinsurer being the backstop on that it's possible to do so there is some discussion about that I've also talked to some some wholesale agencies that are are looking to solve this problem typically market the marketplace if there's difficulties you know the industry solves those problems so I'm talking to a couple right now that are looking at a product to help um, provide coverage under these difficult circumstances. You know, we don't have the details yet, but we have ongoing discussions with them. Right, well, thank you. And uh, I'm just gonna plug the agency really quickly. If you have questions or concerns uh, about your insurance, you know, please give us a call. We're at 444-2040. And uh, any uh, parting words before we go here, Bob? Well, appreciate the opportunity to give you a message. Well, well, thank you for uh, sitting with me. And again, any questions, reach out to us, and thanks for listening.